Please be good. We got nothing but bubbles. <laughs> we have an issue. Every build has one. Hey, what's, what's up, up Light Bright Nation? Nation. <laughs> we are home. Oh, hi, Allie. Allie Pups is out here. Hi, Allie Pups. <laughs> Anyhow, we are back from Michigan and we did some really cool things there. We learned a lot of cool stuff. We sure did. And we met a lot of friends and as fun as that was, we are really happy to be back home. Build time. Yes. I love so shop time. We can get time. back in that shop over there. Cause that's what we love. Yes, I love being in that shop. Yes. So we got a couple builds. Let's go check them out. We have Ryan's 2015 JK Sport. And if you guys remember, he was the first customer to come to the daycare center. Chris did a rear frame chop, and now he's back for more fun installs. So Ryan went with the Fusion Elite 44. This thing is sweet. It's all welded. It's got an Eaton E locker, 513 gears in it. We got 513s for the rear. We got RCV axles for the front. That one and that one are gonna come out. We're gonna put these rock jocks bearings in here. Got a rear cover from Fusion. This thing is super thick. Also, we're going with the PSC Big Bore kit, new PSC Ram fluids, new pump. So he's doing an entire steering overhaul. These are the rare parts, ball joints, rebuildable ball joints for the Dana 44. These things are awesome. Spared no expense. These are the Spicer front hubs. So we're gonna put new front hubs in it and 10 factory rear chromoly axle shafts in his Dana 44 rear when we do the upgraded gear set. So that's what we got our, our work cut out for us. Should take us a couple of days because I think we have to change out some joints in here. I think we got to change out some joints in the front too. We're gonna use his front knuckles because he has upgraded knuckles on this and big brakes. So we're gonna use those on this Elite 44. Make sure you check out Fusion 4x4. They have some pretty awesome stuff. Uh, their turnaround was pretty quick too. I think we got this in like three weeks. So make sure you check them out for sure. Let's get this thing in the air. So one of the first things we have to do to this axle is get the ball joints put in and check these things out. These are really neat ball joints. They're rebuildable. There is a grease pocket in here. There's a cap that comes on here. These things are pretty awesome. Rare parts. These things are sweet. So the first thing we gotta do is get these in this axle before we can put the knuckles back on it. So let's get those in. Look at these guys, these things are super sexy. Look at that. The only thing left I gotta do is put this dust cap on there. Oh, also, make sure you put the Zerk fitting either forward or backward. Don't have it come out this side or that side. You won't be able to get a grease gun on it because the knuckle will be on this side and you can't get it on that side. All I got left to do is put this top cap in it, but we do this very last, like wheels are on, the things on the ground, this is the very, very, very last thing we're gonna do is put this top cap in here. What this does is set the preload on this upper ball joint. So the whole thing has to be on the ground so that this ball joint will find its happy place in here. And then you set this to 55 inch pounds 
and put it on. Then you put the Zerk fitting in the top and then you can grease it from the top. So this is the last thing to do. I gotta get that other side on there and then we can get it in the Jeep. All right, we got all of them in, both sides. Everybody's happy. Back got the old knuckles off, They're the TerraFlex knuckles, the upgraded ones. So those are gonna go on here once we get the axle in the JK. And I put those guys in with the snap-on master ball joint and U-joint set. This thing is awesome. Um, I am not sponsored by Snap-on in any way, shape, or form, uh, but that thing is awesome. This has everything you need. It'll do ball joints, this little guy right here. That little guy right there will help you do the U-joints. The other end of that will help you on the other side. That'll push a cup out. This thing's pretty sweet. There's your constructions. Yeah, I kept them. All right, now Beck's got this axle completely torn apart. All we gotta do now is get it down on an axle cart so we can get it out. So that's what we're gonna do next. So one of the last things we have to do to this axle is put these rock jock upper Johnny joints in this axle. So we have to press out the brand new bushings that come in here and guess what? That's what this tool will do. Cup on the back side, this on the front side and it'll just press that bushing right out of there. Out she comes. Oh, there it goes. Oh. And it's out. Now we use this to press the new ones in. All right, while I'm finishing up this axle, Miss Beck is gonna get this torn apart so that we can re-gear that guy we're just gonna throw 513s in here i'm not sure what these are but i know they're not 513s because that's what he ordered so she's just got to pull the axles out of it both sides calipers and then we'll get that diff out of there and get it re-geared so she's gonna work on that while i finish this axle <laughs> Ryan, you had a Black Widow underneath your brake. So Beck got the axles out. And I got the pins disconnected because we have to pull this through the housing again. So we have to take the connector piece off. We pulled the axles all the way out because we're putting these factory tens back in. And they have a sealed bearing with a seal. So the tapered bearing on the stock one comes out, but you have to pull this race out. And this race is not that hard. Sometimes you can get them by hand if you're, oh, yep, it's out. So these are not hard to get out. There you go. Every once in a while I get one where you have to, yeah, you gotta, yeah, let this one, that one is not budging. So we'll have to get the little, a little pick <laughs> on the end of the slide hammer. Just give it a little rappy tappy tappy out of there. Yep, there it goes. I got the bottom. Spin it on the bottom. Yeah, there it goes. Ooh, hit it again. Ta da! Nice. <laughs> now we're just gonna yank this diff out and get it re geared before we get to the front. I don't know, because we're already here. thing I want to do on the pinion is I want to pull this bottom bearing because I want to know what that shim is under there so that I can put it on the new pinion. So, get this bad boy out. Yeah. Seats where it needs to be. 
So it's supposed to be between six and ten. Six and ten. And we're right at eight and a half. We're right in there. Uh, eight and a half. I'm not gonna chase that. That's right in the middle of the spec, so. We're gonna run that. Now I got left to do is run a pattern. Please be good. I like to wipe it out and not up and down so that you don't get confused when the pattern runs. You'll know because this is like this and the pattern should run like that. So that way there's no confusion in the end. So now, so you wanna hold some tension on here. And look at that mark. It's right in the middle. Heck yeah. Looks really good. And then you can go this way, do a coast. And the coast will be on the front side. That looks really good. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, look at this pattern. It's sucked up right in the middle. Good healthy bite. Same with the coast. The coast side is all healthy, right, right in the middle. Nice big coast side. So there we go. We're gonna put it back together. Throw some axles in it, put some fluid in it. And do the front, and do the steering. Then we'll be done. So there it is, it's all in. Just a reminder, these are 80 foot-pounds. These are 135 foot-pounds. In a used 44, when you put a 44 back together, the torque on this, it's 12 to 15 foot-pounds of rotational torque without the gear in it. So just this has to be in there. Should run pretty good. Now what you gotta do is put our factory 10 axles back in here and put it back together. While Chris gets the old gearbox out, we're going to put the new one in and then also add the PSC RAM in case you guys are wondering, the yellow tells are to make us aware and see that this is sticking out so we don't hit I our hate noggins. My head. <laughs> How often does that happen? Um, a few few times. A few, few times a build. Yeah? Usually I hit my head on the still rack. okay up there? These are yellow too, and I still hit my head on them. <laughs> Okay, so we are leaving the arms loose right now because at the end, we wanna drop it to the ground and adjust the caster. I'm out here taking the trash out <laughs> and I came across this little guy. All right, so next we have to load up these RCVs. We have to put the caps on them, slide the caps on them, make sure they're full of grease, which it looks like they already are. I haven't taken that off because I'm afraid that they are full of grease and then they're gonna be all over the place. Oh yeah, full of grease. So we gotta put these caps on the axle you have to do this in two stages. You have to put the axle through the hub. This has to go on the axle after it goes through the hub and then pop them together. Hardest part, I swear. All right, dust shield, unit bearing, brake caliper, then we'll pop this guy on. Put that through that hole.
Yes, I'm going to anesthetize them. Now for the hard part. Being careful, I usually just use like two screwdrivers and just kind of pry it on there. You want to put a little bit of grease, just a little bit of grease on the surface. That way it'll pop over. Go, go, go. Got it. There you go. Easy peasy. So the other thing you'll notice so there's a grease fitting right here. I have a grease gun that only has RCV grease in it. And once I'm done, I can put more grease in here. I also have to grease this guy and that one. So we're gonna do these ones in a little bit. But I'll show you the cool trick to do these guys. And I see unit bearing industrial. I don't feel like you could use too much in this application because have you ever tried to get one of these off when it was rusted in place? Not gonna happen. Pain in the butt. I could do this inner surface because that bearing likes to run in there. Any kind of prevention in the future. I know this stuff gets everywhere, but I would rather have it be everywhere than have to pound this thing off with a hammer and potentially ruining something in the future. So, there you go. These already had anesthesia on them, so I'm just gonna run them back in. I'm not gonna put too much more on there. Twelve point thirteens go to seventy-five foot pounds. Seventy-five foot pounds. Well, that went out way easier than the other side. Whatever. Sweet. Now for the steering links. So everything's on, tightened, torqued. All we have left are the steering links. I'm gonna put them on and hope for the best. I know they're gonna have to be adjusted, but uh, we're just gonna throw them on and then we can get this thing on the ground, check pinion angle and caster, and steering and tow, and get ready to wrap this thing up. Oh, oh, still got a steering ram to put on it. That shouldn't be that hard. But first, we gotta get all the steering links on, so let's do that. Now we got to mount a PSC RAM. The axle comes with this bracket, which would dual as like a, uh, like a steering stabilizer bracket. So this will go wherever you need it to be. But I don't like this because PSC sends it with these weld on tabs. And I prefer the weld on tabs. So this will get welded on here, which will make it much more sturdy and a lot more stable. So we're going to get ahead, go ahead and weld these on. I'm going to grind it off and have Beck glue it on there with the metal gluer. So uh, let's get this cleaned off and these tabs welded on. I'll just put the plug on the diff. That's done. We gotta fill this bad boy up. What are we gonna use? Our favorite, VP. We're gonna do the 8140 because there's a locker in here and uh, he does like to wheel it. You could get away with the 8090, but we're gonna use the 8140 from BP Racing. Sounds good. All right, we got the front 
diff all filled up. We got the PSC on. I just got to tighten it down, but I won't need to adjust it when we turn. Beck's over here putting the front drive shaft back in. Can't forget the Loctite. Make sure you're using Loctite. Uh, what do we got left? I'm gonna hook up the ABS lines. Still gotta put it on the ground so that we can do these ball joints. I'm gonna do those on the ground and then we can do an alignment real quick. I'm gonna play with this right now, make sure it goes lock to lock and uh, it doesn't bind. So that's what we're gonna do now while Beck is putting in that front drive shaft. So we have an issue. This is an eight inch ram at full right is where we put the clamp on. When you go full left, this ram wants to go about that much farther. How much farther? That much farther. So this is what the piston is. It's inside of here and I need to limit it in here. So what I need to do is put a shim in there to stop it so that it only goes to here. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to take this one apart and I'm going to add this spacer so that it'll limit the throw so that we don't break anything or bind anything or bend this ram, put any more stress on the pump. It's going to lock this out before it wants to break anything out here. So we'll have to take this thing off and get it apart, put this bushing in it. All right, this is how easy this is. PSC, screw the cap off. Boom. Take your spacer. Boom, put cap back on. Now, the only thing you really gotta watch out for is the seal, so I just kind of Twist it on there. It, it is have, it's got grease and oil in it. So we'll just run this back in there. It takes a minute, but we'll get it on there. Once you get that twisted all back on there. We're home. Make sure your O-rings look good. Screw that cap all the way down. Tighten it up. I use tie rod pliers because I really love these things for the grip that they have. Um, I don't have a spanner, but I should probably get one now because uh, I've only done two of these this way. And you just give it a little uh, tight. There you go. Now I have, I only go that far out. Now she's only six inches instead of eight and a half or eight. Maybe she's only five inches. I don't know. I'll have to measure. I only needed to put in an inch 40, inch 40 thou spacer to stop this from coming all the way out. So now I can fine tune adjust this. Time when it's all in there. So let's get it back in. So now we got it back in. She's all the way locked down. The heim doesn't quite get buried in there because this is just where it locks down at. I do like to run this one as far in as I can get it to go. And we are all the way fully turned to the right. And that thread, thread's in there. So nailed it. First try. I swear to God, this is first try. It's not movie magic. Uh, it just was first try. So now we can fine tune the system and this will never bind or put pressure on any of these ball joints or this ball joint or that tie rod end. Yeah, that's a tie rod end, not a ball joint. I know, I know, I know. So we won't put any pressure on that or the stop or try to pull this too far or any anything like that. It won't put any extra pressure on these tabs. So there you go, just lined up. Now I just gotta fill the system up, hook the two hoses up, get it running. All right, so we got the lines on for the power steering. Hopefully the right way. I'm just kidding. I know they're the right way. <laughs> we got to put the ABS lines on right now. Beck is going to fill the power steering reservoir so that we can get that bled. And then we can do this, finish the setup, get the pinion angle right and the caster and do all that. We have an issue. Every build has one. We set the PSC up to go lock to lock on these spindles that he had in his old axles. Well, apparently the spindles were stopped short. I don't know why, which required that PSC to only be six and three quarters throw. Once we started bleeding it. We got nothing but bubbles. <laughs> because that's an eight inch throw pitman arm. This pitman arm wants to throw eight inches. So I have to take the steering stops out of these spindles, probably take the stop out of that ram and start over and figure out why, why it was stopped short. I'm not sure why it was stopped short before 
but we need eight inches of throw. So I'm gonna go back through and take that spacer back out of there and reset the suspension back up. How's it looking? Well, I think we got it. There's a little bit of play at the end, but just a little bit. So it goes full lock. Right there, look at it. That's all the play it has. Just that little bit right there. So I'm gonna take it. And that's what he's getting. What's the level? We are just above the filter. All right, I'm gonna fire it up. So we have the RCV grease in here, and there's a little needle guy in the end of this axle that'll fill that RCV boot. So I'm just gonna put a couple of squirts in this side, and probably a couple in the other side. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> then we can put the front wheels on. That's supposed to be like a stress release. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my green stress ball. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That should be good. There you go. All right, got the wheels and tires on, got the steering all right and bled. Now we just have to put the track bar in it. So we have to measure left and right and put the track bar in it. And we also have to do the upper ball joints. But let's get her centered. 17 and a half to the, this lug from inside of here. These are just ballparks, so 17 and a half on this side. Woohoo! Real close, real close. Maybe a quarter of an inch off, so let's put it in. Dang. Look at that muscle popping out right there. Thanks, coach. <laughs> Woo. Watch this go right back in where it needs to. I'll be happy. So we can take a little bit out of the track bar, a little bit. Yeah. Third measurement. 18. 18 and some change. A little bit more. This needs to be like 18 and an eight. Woo! Spot on, I bet. Woo! I'll take it. Even Steven? Even Steven. So now we just tighten it all up. Now that we have the whole thing put back together, we need to address the caster angle. The way you find the caster on most axles is you have a pumpkin and an pinion. The relation between the center of the C, which is, this is your caster angle, and your pinion angle, in a stock diff is six degrees. So there's six degrees of separation here. The flat that's on the back of the diff is parallel to your pinion. So you wanna measure this. If this is two degrees, it means you have four here because you take two from six, leaves you four degrees of caster. The axle that we just put in this Jeep has 10 degrees of separation. So I need this to be roughly five which will make the caster five, five degrees of caster. So this is what we're gonna go for. Factory is four, we're gonna add an extra one, so I need to make the back of this pinion be five degrees, or uh, 85 from the other direction. So if you go 85 this way, it'll give you five degrees. So that's what we're gonna measure right now. Let's see where this is at. So this is the machine flat that is parallel to the pinion angle. So if you take an angle finder, and you get it on here, it'll say 85 degrees. So 85 degrees from 90 is five degrees, which means we have five degrees of caster in a 10 degree of separation axle. Factory is only six degrees, so you'd want this to be about two degrees off. So it would be 88 degrees or 87, 87 and a half, 88 degrees, which would give you 44 degrees of caster in a factory axle. So this one's spot on, 
So let's take it for a test drive. Empty table, which means we've installed all the parts except for two. So like I said in the beginning, or roughly around the middle of this video, when we did the ball joints, we had to have the vehicle on the ground because it'll set that upper ball joint placement. Now all I have to do is run these caps in. So now all you gotta do is run these guys in. And they want 55 inch pounds, which they say in the directions is just about the, as much as this little guy will run it in. So once the Allen wrench starts to twist, they say it's good. Well, that's it. That's set. And you install this little guy. It's got a little rubber stopper on the end. And goes in the back of this one. Do the same to the other side. Put the grease fitting in the top. Give it a couple pumps of grease. And you are done. Test drive complete. She drives super good. So Straight. Ryan will be super happy with that. So mm -hmm. and turns good. Turns great. Good. It's power steering assist. It's the only way to go. Why don't we just call him up and tell him come get it? Ryan. It's the best part. Come get your Jeep. <laughs> See you soon. And that wraps up another shop video with Chris and Beck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe and share. And you can get all your Light Bright merch at lightbrightstudios.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>